GPUs, graphics cards, whatever you want to call them, what's really going on? Well, it's time to explain it to you. Let's do this. Are you overcompensating with the size of your case? You know what I mean. The Tower 100 Mini ITX case from Thermaltake can house the tallest of CPU coolers and the longest of graphics cards. So no problems with uh, <laughs> length or girth. Staying cool through all your hot and sweaty gaming sessions thanks to the uh, chimney-like design. Available in black and white with tons of glass for the very best looks. It really is a small package that's designed to please. Click the link in the description to find out more. So before I actually start this video, there's not gonna be much else than my beautiful face having, you know, a bitch and a moan and trying to explain a few things to you guys about kind of what the current situation is with graphics cards. So there are stock shortages, but why? And why are they so expensive? And when will things go back to normal? These are all questions that I'm constantly being asked. Now, for kind of clarification, this isn't just GPUs, but this is probably the most affected right now. And I wanted to kind of straighten things out a bit based on insider information that I have and how things work from, I guess, my point of view with talks that I've had with brands, retail partners, distributors, and everyone else in between. So what actually is the issue? Brexit, COVID, tariffs, Trump, Chinese factories, mining, bots and scalpers, shortages, and more importantly, material shortages. Well, I'm sad to say, it's actually all of the above. So people are actually quick to blame Nvidia and AMD, though with the higher market share, Nvidia have actually caught, I guess, most of the flack. People are even quick to blame me and all other reviewers for having all of the cards. Well, to give you some insight, these cards that we get sent, so here's a couple of them, we don't always get to actually keep and are sometimes finding that they're being rotated between other media. Sometimes they break, sometimes they're left with us and we're expected to produce X amount of content for that one particular sample. So it's not, I guess, as clear cut as what everyone thinks. Now for clarification, I have a team of people who make our content on both YouTube and the website. And the cost that I actually outlay for one GPU review in wages, materials, and all that other stuff, it actually far outweighs the retail cost of the card. I could actually go and buy the card itself and have more money in my pocket than getting one for <clears throat> free and paying my team and myself to look at it. So I wanted to get that out of the way. It's not me having a moan, it's just, I feel like it needed to be said. Back on topic though, Nvidia are bringing out cards at X MSRP pricing, but then it's never technically sold at that. Now I've got to defend Nvidia here. It's not actually their fault, really. If they bought out a higher MSRP, people would complain that the cards are just too damn expensive. So why are the cards as expensive as they are right now? Well, starting with Brexit. Brexit has imposed terms and extra paperwork. So that's just one aspect of it. COVID, yes, we've got to talk about the elephant in the room. It did have a knock-on effect with factories closed for a long time, pretty much, you know, last year. And with staff members still off due to illness, family illness, and much more. But obviously with China, we don't always get to see a clear picture of what's going on as kind of so much of it is hidden to basically protect themselves from outside interference. So you do have to kind of take some of it with a pinch of salt. Now they are also still playing catch up and with the likes of TSMC who produce for both AMD and Nvidia, they also produce for some of the biggest car manufacturers in the world. And in all honesty, there's more money in cars than consumer enthusiast GPUs. So I'm afraid if you were TSMC, I mean, what would you realistically be doing? You'd be chasing the money, right? Now on the CPU front, Intel are slightly different because they have their own fabs. So stock shouldn't be an issue. They're not reliant on TSMC. And people are claiming that, you know, with Intel, the ship has sailed and all that, demand won't be as high. So that means technically there would be no artificial demand inflation like you're seeing right now. Tariffs, that's another one. In America, this all changed and China and America had their tariffs end. Now, I'm not gonna pretend I know the ins and outs, but it does mean that certain goods are charged at different rates or at standard rates. And that obviously has, again, a knock-on effect. Now, Trump didn't exactly have the best relationship with China and most goods, including GPUs, come out of China and Taiwan. And again, tariffs and all that other stuff all came into play. The other thing is factories, which again, had to take huge time off and they still aren't technically at 100% capacity and likely won't be for a few more months. Chinese New Year obviously didn't help things either, which was just finished. Mining, 
I mean, that's another aspect as well. Now, at the end of the day, we've been here before and we have bounced back from the whole mining crisis. So while miners aren't exactly helping the situation, it's not the only reason behind it all. Now, this next one, bots and scalpers. So I don't have anything for this one, apart from saying that they are the scum of the earth and are taken advantage, but, and there's a big but, all the time that people are buying the cards from the scalpers, you are feeding their opportunity and also technically making you part of the problem. If you don't buy from them, they won't be selling them and that will help things kind of return back to normal. Sorry to say, but you're as much to blame as the people actually selling them for these inflated prices. Now shortages, this is the big one. So TSMC are making less, Nvidia and AMD are getting less, so therefore AIBs are getting even less. But why are they coming into retailers in such small quantities? And why are they higher priced even then? You know, it's just a real tricky one that paints a bigger picture. And most of this actually all comes down to shipping. So shipping containers are used to transport these amazing fandangled graphics cards from Asia to all over the world. And being from the UK, it makes sense for me to kind of focus on that as it's actually one of the furthest locations for them to travel to. Now, getting a shipping container is one thing, getting a slot on the vessel is frankly another. And that's why these containers are literally just sitting around doing nothing because the boats don't actually have the space for them. And to get space, well, that's gonna cost you. So the typical cost of a shipping container was around $1,500 USD. Yes, stuff like this even in the UK is dealt with in US dollars. It just, they, it is. And yes, everything that goes on in the US has an effect on this because of US dollars. Even in the UK, as rates go up and down. Now in July, 2020, the cost of a shipping container was around $2,500. Before that, it was actually closer to about $1,500. And now, are you ready? It's anywhere between 12 to $14,000. And that doesn't include if you can even get a vessel slot. Now I was sent these pictures just showing how typical things are right now, which hopefully gives you some kind of perspective of what's going on and why there's such a big crisis with even getting hold of the cards, let alone for the prices that you want them for. Now I did some calculations. A typical container, which is a 40 foot high cube, which is 2,300 cubic feet, could potentially hold 800 to 1,200 average size cases, so mid towers, which are the most popular. Now, if the cost of that has gone from, say, $1,500 to $15,000, that means each case, if we say 1,000 to be conservative, has gone up in price by $13.50. Now, while the manufacturer can swallow some of that, the distributor and the retailer, who generally work on pretty low margins anyway, won't be keen to swallow, well, any of it. So sadly, it falls on you as a consumer. Now, I mentioned cases because they're a big item. Graphics cards obviously are much smaller, so feel free to kind of work out your own maths on that one. How many of these would you be able to fit in a 40 foot high cube? And you can do it from there. Also, this doesn't actually include extra costs like road haulage in the UK or UK customs clearance, which generally would cost about 500 pounds each. Again, adding on further costs that someone needs to swallow. Who's it gonna be? Now, for those who don't know, stuff is normally brought on a FOB or free on board basis, meaning that the seller or factory or whoever's making the item is responsible for the items until they're on the vessel. After that, it's down to the buyer, or in most cases, like this, the distributor. Now, another key thing is what these amazing products are actually made from. So cases are made from glass, aluminium, steel. Graphics cards are steel, carbon, uh, plastic, ABS, and much, much more. And right now, there is a shortage on raw materials. All of these products are made and put in cardboard boxes, of which are then put in larger cardboard boxes. And you guessed it, cardboard and plastic are short in supply too. You're starting to see a little bit of a theme now. Now, this primarily comes down to the massive demand that we had in Q4 that just frankly wasn't expected. More people were at home, it was cold outside, they wasn't out, so they were at home, they were playing games, they were on their computers. It all kind of adds up. So when will things actually get better? Well, sources close to me are saying July. But what's so important in July? Why are things gonna be different? Well, for the most part, summer will be here. More people will be outside and not inside wanting to play games with hardware that they frankly can't buy. This will allow the likes of China to reap the benefits of slower sales, meaning that they actually have a chance to play catch up with materials and slower shipping can be done. So everyone's not kind of fighting for space on the same boat, which is pretty much what's happening right now. And it's simply a bidding war, which in all honesty, the highest bidder will always, always win. 
And that's pretty much everything that's going on. So hopefully it's given you a little bit of an insight that it's not the company's profiteering. They're in exactly the same boat as you where they wanna sell it for the price that it's been deemed to be at, but it's just not, it just doesn't have the ability to kind of be in that situation right now. But there is a silver lining, things should get better as the weather improves. I mean, it's something as simple as that. As the weather improves, we go outside, we're not inside, we're not buying stuff. It gives them a chance to kind of catch up a little bit. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And let me know what your thoughts are. Is this surprising to you or is this kind of what you expected? The amount of people who have messaged me saying, it must be this, it must be that. It it's a whole host of issues that have just basically become one big cluster. And that's kind of where things are at the moment. So there you go. See you in the next one, guys. See you later.